hey everyone this is andy at the dispelaudio.com and in this one shot tips video i'm going to have a look at how to do drum replacement without having to use a dedicated uh, program for the job i'll say at the outset if you do a lot of drum replacement or a lot of drum enhancement parts if you find yourself needing to um, trigger samples to go with audio tracks on a regular basis, it's probably going to be worthwhile thinking about investing in something like Slate Trigger, which is a, a brilliant piece of kit, and it will save you a lot of time if you do this on a fairly regular basis. But if you've just got the occasional track that you need to uh, deal with, and you don't want to clutter yourself up with additional software, then this is generally the way to do it. What we're going to focus on here is workflow. So although the buttons and menu items will be slightly different in any different door you're using, um, the, the principles remain the same. I'm using Cubase 7.5, and what I've got here is a, a, a part of a, a real project <clears throat> which has been trimmed down, so I deleted everything out and resaved it under the name of uh, One Shot Drum Replacement with just the drum kits on there. And we're going to look on this occasion at snare drum. So if I just solo that and we just have a listen through to what we've uh, actually got recorded. OK, not, not a bad recording in itself, but, um, but let's just use it as a, as a basis for this example. So thinking about what we need to do, we want to play back samples. So we need to kick off a virtual instrument that will play back drum samples, and that could be either a dedicated sample player or a specific drum VI. And on this occasion, I'm going to use Easy Drummer 2, so going down the, the dedicated drum virtual instrument route. In order, to take, in order to tell the sample player what it needs to play, we need some MIDI, and in order to create the MIDI, we need a performance, which is what we've got recorded here. Um, I want to try and make sure that when I create my MIDI, it's got just the essence of the snare performance in it with everything else that I can possibly cut out, removed. So what I will do is this. I'm going to mangle this pretty badly. So I'm going to copy my snare track, and I'm going to drag it down to the bottom. Um, so number one rule, if there is a number one rule, is don't mess about with the audio that you want to have ending up in your project. So down here, I've got my copy of snare. I'm going to rename it. as snare for MIDI, and I've colored it something totally, totally different so I don't get myself confused. Right, let's solo that, kick it off, and see what we can do with it. Um, so I'm not yelling over it. Just turn that down a wee little bit. Right, let's filter, low cut. Let's get rid of drum and to uh, kick and tom. High cut, let's see if we can get rid of as much of that background bleed and cymbal splash and things like that as is possible. Then let's really bring out, let's uh, narrow that down. Sounds pretty awful, doesn't it? Okay, you wouldn't want that going anywhere near your main mix, but the the idea is but the idea is to make it as as clearly snare as we can and in fact just to enhance that i'm going to stick a gate on it as well so just using the bog standard cubase gate and little tip here you notice i've put this massive boost on at what 409 so although it's i mean don't get me wrong it's not super critical but while we're here, let's help things along. I'm going to center the side chain on my gate at the same frequency that I've massively boosted here. And then I'm going to drop the threshold. bit of adjustment now i can bring my gate level up and if i'm not careful i end up getting my b 
big hits and missing all the nuances. That make a performance a performance so that's not too bad i've got a bit of bleed through on that but that should do me for the moment and if i now close that down do that so playing again just the um just the actual drum part there and without the gate Yeah, sounds as though I'm pretty much getting that. Right, I now want to create a an audio file that sounds like that does. So what we've got there is an audio file played back through some fairly drastic EQ filtering and a gate. I need to produce an audio file that actually sounds like that. So in Cubase, I go up to File, Export Audio, Mix Down, and I'm going to call this... there for MIDI file and I want to use just my snare for MIDI um, track I'm going to import it back into the project and if I hit the export button go on and let that do its stuff should be fairly quick because there's not much processing to do and there we go yeah so if I play just this back now comparison pretty much the same as okay stop that for a moment right i now need to produce some midi and this is you've been able to do this for a, a longer while in cubase but as of release 7 it got a lot easier and a lot better so basically if i open that file up into the um where am i the sample editor and just sort the zoom out so i can actually see what i'm doing there and you see that Cubase has actually filled in the hit points for me already. Um, now, if you are doing a bit of drum enhancement and all you want to do is catch the main hits, then you can actually set your threshold quite high and just get the, get the biggies. If on the other hand, let's just zoom that a little bit vertically to make it a bit more obvious. There we go. Um, but using the, the threshold control, I can come down and I want to try and capture as much of the performance as I can. And that means like all those little ghost hits and taps that drummers put in. Um, if I go too far, I risk picking up things like noise. Um, but there's usually a level that you can come down to which captures pretty much what you're after. And I'm going to go, I think that's more or less. Yeah, that's looking as though it's pretty much caught the performance so what i will do is i'm going to hit the great midi notes i'm going to keep dynamic velocity which means that these little tiny quiet bits which may be imperfectly filtered hits from elsewhere or very quiet snares are going to come out really quiet the length of the midi notes i really don't care about because they'll play out as long as the sample plays and I'll explain why this matters in a moment, but for the moment, just check that. I'm leaving that set to pitch C1. I can change that, but just for the moment, I'll leave it there. Hit the OK button, and I've got a MIDI track, and I'm going to call that Snare MIDI. And just to make it blindingly obvious that it's something completely different, I'm going to give it that delightful color there. Right, so I've got a MIDI track which should hopefully match in pretty well with what I was doing in my audio. Um, I now need something to play with it. So up to devices, BST instruments. I want a rack instrument in this case, and I'm going to load up Easy Drummer. It's going to ask me, do I want a MIDI track to go with Easy Drummer? And I'm going to say no, because I already have my MIDI track. Um, create a MIDI track assigned, cancel that. The uh, virtual instrument stays in the rack and I now need to just pop down here and tell my MIDI track that I want it to point to Easy Drummer. There you go, as easy as that. And there is my kit just sitting there. Right, brilliant, except for one thing. 
if I go in and look at my MIDI track, remember we mentioned C1? Well, I've got a whole bunch of something that thinks it wants to play a pitch note at C1, and that's not remotely what I was after. I wanted a snare drum. Um, in order to convert that from using a piano roll to a drum roll, I need a drum mat. And I know that the template that I'm using at the moment, I don't actually have easy drummer uh, drum maps loaded in, into it. But for the basic parts like a snare, kicks and so on, it's quite all right to use the, the general MIDI map. You lose some of the nuances of the extended kits, but this is fine for what we're doing here. And you see that change? That is now, I know that those that shape means that that's switched over to being a drum roll editor. And if I open up, yep, what I've now got is oh, a whole bunch of bass drum hits, but I wanted snares, not to worry. Um, I'm going to do a control A, which selects everything. And then I'm going to do a drag and I'm going to drop that in the same positions down onto my acoustic snare drum there. Um, when I was creating my MIDI and I said, make a note of the C1, C1 is a bass drum. Now I know that my acoustic snare is D1. I could have changed it there and not had to do that state, that stage, but just so that we can see it. So there I've got a whole bunch of hits. If I just zoom out a bit, you can see that's actually made up of lots of separate little snare hits. And you can see that I've got um, a whole range of different dynamic velocities down at the down at the bottom. And nothing else, just literally clean snare parts. So if I close that off now, so I've got a bunch of MIDI that thinks it's going to play a snare drum in a virtual instrument, and the MIDI track is pointing at Easy Drummer, and Easy Drummer has got a snare drum in it. So I just mute my horrible audio track there. Okay, that sounds that sounds kind of like a snare performance. Now, I'll just warn at this point, <clears throat> it doesn't always come out perfectly. Um, you sometimes find that you get the odd false trigger or that you get uh, the odd missed hit. You can go in and paint those in if you want to, but within a context of a performance, if you are keeping the the original audio, certainly you can often just subtly tuck your... Um, your samples in underneath it. And if you get the the odd little miss, it really isn't going to matter that much within the, the context of a, uh, of a performance. So if I just put my original snare and my samples together. There you go. Snare part enhanced with MIDI. Now, there's obviously something that's happened down here. Let's just have a quick listen to what we've got here. No, that's actually not too bad. Um, it's always worthwhile if you get really quiet bits, just going back and doing a quick sanity check to make sure that you're not blatting snare parts out where you don't want them. That really doesn't look too bad, but if I, uh, if I did have stuff there that I didn't want, I can always go in and remove it quite simply, or go into the editor itself and do it. That was just um, the, the edit in place option that you get in Cubase. So there you go. Um, not exactly one easy step, but you can see if you've just got the occasional track to do and you don't have any dedicated software, you don't have to go along feeling that you uh, that you can't do anything with that. It's worth a very, very, very quick mention about phase at this point. Um, because you are triggering samples, which are completely different to the hits on the original track, it's unlikely that you're going to get any significant 
these issues cropping up. But, you know, it's always worthwhile to just do a quick check and except that that's not going to do the job for me. And just you'll occasionally get a, a freak occurrence where those end up sounding distinctly wrong together. Flip the um, the phases it's called, you're actually flipping the polarity, but let's not worry about that and um, and see where you end up with it. So there you go, a replacement track done. That's Andy with the decibelaudio.com. This was a one-shot tip for a better mix and catch you in the next video. Take care now.